In this tutorial, we will talk about the uh, Enscape rendering, and after that, we will talk about the uh, V-Ray 6.1 for SketchUp rendering. As you know, the competition between Enscape and V-Ray is really close, and today we want to know that which one is better. Let's get to work. I'm gonna start my job with the Start Enscape in here, so I'm gonna click on the Start Enscape. It takes a little bit of time and after that Enscape will load for us. So is that really true? Enscape is not really realistic like the other softwares like the uh, V-Ray. Today we want to test it out. So I'm going to turn on the safe frame in here. This is my main shot. I can click on the view management and select my Enscape camera. So I'm going to click on the visual setting, move it a little bit to some place like that. It's good. I'm going to change the quality to the ultra quality and turn on the depth of field, turn off the autofocus, play with the focal point, I can focus on these places. So I think 2.24 meter can be good and depth of field is some number about 9%. So in the auto exposure I can click on the atmosphere, before I check the auto exposure, click on the uh, sky option, turn off the all the clouds setting in here, like that. Because I need some completely clear GI calculation. So in the uh, output, everything is good for me. In the atmosphere, fog option is zero and some brightness. I can reduce this some brightness a little bit, not too much. For example, some number about 44%. And in the uh, shadow sharpness, I can create some type of soft shadows, something like that, or hard shadows. That's completely depends on you and what you want from your render. 4% is good. Artificial light brightness not useful. When I reduce the ambient brightness, we will have some type of dark area inside of the house. So I want to increase it about 69%. Wind is totally zero. And the image bar is the auto contrast mode. So for the color temperature, I need some warm rendering. I can decrease the color temperature 5800 Kelvina. And the saturation is about 102%. Motion blur is zero. Bloom option is about maybe four, or I can increase it a little bit. Something like that. For example, 38. And lens flare is about maybe 70%. So not bad. Something like this can be good. Wignate is about 24 and chromatic aberration is 0. In the main bar, I'm going to increase the auto exposure a little bit. Something about 54. And time for the rendering. So, I think under that maybe 3 minutes, we adjust our manual setting for the realistic rendering in Enscape. So, I'm going to click on the uh, batch rendering in here. Check out the Enscape, render images, and save it on my desktop. It takes a little bit of time, and after that, you can see the final result of your render. So, I'm going to test it out on the Avire. I'm going to close it in here, and I don't want to shoot her in this place. In the material bar, I see my materials is good setting, because I download the materials from the Enscape library, and it will sync for you in the Avire library. In the light mode, I want to change the sunlight, but I don't know how. Before I do all of these jobs, I'm going to click on the setting, render output, save frame, and this is my resolution. So I'm going to play with the uh, camera, something like that, for example. All right, I'm going to click on the uh, eye in here, look around a little bit. My eye height is about 0 0.68. And camera is the two point perspective. I'm going to click on the add option and rename it to the uh, V ray. So now we are in the V ray camera. I'm going to click on the render interactive to see what happened. As you can see, this is our environment. It's a little bit too dark, but I can fix it out. Don't worry about these settings in there. So I'm going to move it in this place, sketch up in here. Open the V-Ray Asset Editor and I'm going to click on the lights in here, sunlight, open it and check the custom orientation. So 
It will sync the uh, main sum position in Enscape to the array because I need some equal setting for the equal conclusion. So as you can see, the environment a little bit dark. I can increase the intensity of the uh, sun about maybe 11. It takes a little bit time, and after that, you can see the result. Or maybe something about 36. Something like that can be good. So I prefer to use 30, for example. So if I want some soft shadows, I can play with the uh, multiple intensity. When you increase it, your shadows will be faded out. I need some number about maybe 6.64 in the V-Ray. So I'm going to move it downside. My sky model is the uh, PRG clear sky. So I will close the sky in here. Blend angle is not really important right now. Albedo color is not really useful. Clouds are not really useful. And I will close it in here. In other parts, for example, in the uh, rendering elements, I can add light mix in here. At the final render, it can help me to adjust my sunlights. So about the, uh, I think, setting, I can come down and turn on the uh, V-Ray denoiser in here. Right now, it's not turning on because we are in the uh, render mode. So I'm going to... Check out the uh, save image in the environment. I will turn on the uh, GI calculation. I can increase it to the uh, 11, for example, or I can turn it off. As you can see, the details are completely as the same. So I will turn it on in here. I need some white color and I will increase it about maybe 22. And the uh, background light is about 6. As you can see, it can affect my render and the screen very carefully. So in the environment, I will close it in here. Render output is good. But in the camera, I can play with the uh, exposure. I can make my screen much brighter with the uh, EV value in here. 13.24 is good. White blouse is the uh, automatic. So I'm going to turn on the depth field. Turn it on. And... I can increase the focus distance, for example, to the uh, 236 and play with the defocus to see what happened. As you can see, I can see some changes in my environment. Very simple. Now, in these places, we have some faded area. So, it's now working and focusing on the uh, main target in here. I will turn it down to some number about maybe 0 0.226 my focus source is the fixed distance or i can check it out on the camera target when i check it out on the camera target i can play with the defocus to see what will happen in my job when i fold it up you can see it completely get blur so if I want some sharp render with the uh, realistic focusing, I can reduce it to some number about 0 0.344. So, in the effects, I'm going to increase the Vignette, not too much. Equal with the Enscape, 0 0.22 is good. And vertical lens tint is not really useful right now. When I increase it, you can see what will happen. Your lens will be get a little bit faded out. Right now, I don't need it. I'm going to convert it to the zero, and EV can be increased like that. Everything is good in the camera setting. About the rendering setting, I don't want to change these settings. I'm going to click on the uh, stop, but before I do this job, I'm going to play a little bit with my camera to some type of actual area like this. Maybe something like that is good. I can click on the zoom in the SketchUp and zoom it manually to create some exact view of my job. Something like that. Click on the eye option. 0 0.72 is good. 
and my camera is the uh, two point perspective. I'm gonna update my camera view. Everything is good for me. Now I want to render it, so I'm gonna stop the render interactive, maximize it, V-Ray Asset Editor, and I'm gonna increase the quality to the high plus, turn off the progressive render. I want some batch render. Turn on the CPU and GPU with each other. Denoiser will be on for me, or I can turn it off. It's not really useful right now. And I'm going to click on the uh, final render. So, as you can see, it takes a little bit of time. And after that, rendering in V-Ray will be a start for you, very simple and easy. As you can see, the differences between V-Ray and Enscape is that in the real time rendering, you don't need to waste your time on these settings and priorities. But uh, in the uh, node rendering like the Avire, we have these type of problems sometimes. So after a minute, I will show you final result. So as you can see, Vire rendering now continuing and in the past 64, I think. So I can click on the layers and select the light mix, which I added before this tutorial. And you can see I can manage, for example, sunlight 1.2. And I can increase it immediately in my rendering. Or environment is about 4 for example. Or maybe 2.4 can be acceptable. self illuminate is not really useful. But in the all lights I can change it to the 1.7. I can add some type of exposures in here. For example 0.06. And add some other layers. For example saturation. I can click on the saturation and increase it. Or decrease it completely. Depends on you, 0.003 meter is good. And I can add another layer, for example, white balance for the temperature and some other things. Right now, I'm going to increase the temperature to the 6700 Kalvina. And the uh, another type of layer I want to add to this job, I think related to the uh, exposure. I can reduce the highlight burn in some areas as you can see, for example, waste. And I can increase the exposure 0.05 and the contrast is about 0.04. So it's not bad, it's good. I can save it right now, but my rendering continue. But I really want to show you what is the differences. So I will type for it V-Ray and press save. So rendering will be continue for me. As you can see, this is the uh, V-Ray rendering that we have in here. And another render related to the Enscape. So, both of them is the uh, simple render. But you can see what is the differences between the uh, V-Ray rendering and the Enscape rendering. V-Ray can be realistic render gives you, but it takes more time. As you can see, I can refer it about maybe, yes, 7 minutes. 22 23 and right now my render is not complicated and complex but as you can see in the enscape we took this render i think under than four minutes so this is the difference between them i hope you enjoyed this video guys thanks for watching and goodbye